Welcome to Specific Love. Today I'm going to show you how to make this simple table that fits behind your sofa, give you some more decorating space, and a couple outlets to plug your stuff into. This is number three of five woodworking videos. If you haven't seen any of the others, I'll put a link to the playlist in the description below, so make sure you check those out. I started off by measuring the width of the sofa, which came to about seven feet. I then purchased a 1x6x8 pine board and some 1x2 furring strips. These will combine to make the main table. The first step was to clean up the end of the main board, so I used my chop saw. But it was just short of a full cut, so I finished it with my mini hacksaw. I then measured the desired 7 feet and repeated the chop saw and hacksaw technique. For the legs on this project, I will be turning four baluster spindles into table legs. Each of these legs measure one and a quarter inches, so I'll have to shorten each of the furring strips by an additional two and a half inches, or a total length of six feet, nine and a half inches. Now the true width of the one by six is actually five and a half inches, which means the ends of the table will need a three inch furring strip between each of the legs. On each of the legs, there is a large dowel at the top that needs to be removed. So I carefully used a hacksaw to make the top flush, and then took them to my belt sander to remove any pieces I missed. After some measuring, we determined the legs of the table needed to be 31 inches tall. So I made a mark and very carefully used a scroll saw to shorten each one. Now it was time to add the outlet boxes to the main board. I actually purchased two types because I was unsure of the outlet location, but I ended up choosing the smaller of the two. I wanted the outlets to be near the ends of the table, so I marked about 8 inches from the edge. I centered the box and traced it on the board. I then drilled out each corner using a 3 8 inch bit and then used the jigsaw to trim out the wood. And the boxes fit perfectly in place. I drilled a pilot hole for each screw and secured them in their new homes. Going back to the legs, I used my Craig kit to drill a pocket hole in the back side of each one. But before securing those in place, I needed to attach the furrings to the underside of the main board. I measured and clamped each furring in place before drilling pilot holes and adding several screws to each one. I next added some wood glue to the mating location of the leg, top board, and furring to help hold the legs secure. My wife then helped me hold each of the legs in place while I added the pocket screws. With the legs this close together, the screws are not the easiest to install, but it is doable. Next up were the end furring pieces, which received a nice helping of glue and were clamped in place. Then each one received a pilot hole and screw to keep them secure. With the wood complete, it was now time to wire up the outlets. I purchased two 7 foot 3 prong extension cords with a black fabric type outer layer that will look nice with the table. I then cut off the large female end and stripped back each of the wires. For the outlets, I chose some bronze colored versions and some screwless wall plates that will match the stain we plan to use. Now after I fed the wires into the box, I grabbed my tester and made sure to find the wire that made it to each prong so I could wire up the outlet correctly. And then I screwed it into place. At this point, my wife was getting excited about the finished product, and she asked if she could add the stain to the top. For the stain color, I chose Bombay Mahogany in satin, because it should be a close match to the sofa. My wife used an old t-shirt to apply two coats to the board, and then she added two coats of white paint to the furrings. And the end result came out better than we expected. After giving it some time to dry, it was positioned behind the sofa and decorated nicely. The outlets also made it much easier to plug up electronics and possibly add a lamp in the future. This will also prevent needing those dangerous extension cords from relaxing with your phone on the sofa. I really enjoyed making this project. It was a really good team effort between my wife and I, and I really enjoyed having her helping me out along the way. Now I'm hoping to get her in some future videos and helping me in the rest of these projects, so make sure you tune in and enjoy those too. Now if you like this project, make sure you click the like button, Tell us what you think about it in the comments, and as always, have fun building.